Oh, you're you're very welcome. It's, it's fun, and thank you for you just broke up a little bit then. That's all right. But um, it's great to talk to you again. It's a good. To, and you are you doing all right? Yeah, I've been I've been well. Lots of stuff happening. Lots going on. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm doing okay. Up and down, you know, like everyone, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's good to it's good to uh, talk to you again. We I know we've spoken before. We we've been you've been on. You, there's another video on your channel with the two of us. Um, I'm Ben Emlyn Jones of Hapanwo Hospital Porters Against the New World Order, and I've been uh, I've been collaborating with Carol on a few projects. We've been on the Paranormal Peep Show as well. As well. So, uh, what would you like to talk about on this particular program? Um, well, believe it or not, the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's uh, topical, if nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's so much going on at the moment. So. Um, I'd like to start with the, well, let me just explain who I am. I'm um, Carol Noonan, and I'm a channel for the Pleiadians, um, and I have been since childhood, and I became aware of that in 2009, 2010, no, I think it was 2010, um, because I didn't realise that I was connected to the Pleiadians as a child. I just thought they were my guides or um, a spirit, you know, I just class them as being spirit um but yeah so i'm a channel for the pleiadians and recently i've been given quite a lot of information about the coronavirus and other things and what's really going on um some of it is um i won't i don't like to use the word basic but some of it is by basic i mean 3d stuff um so what's going on on a 3D level, like the the bio, like, like coronavirus being a bioweapon and um, 5G and money and banks and Internet. So very much earth based stuff and information. Um, and also the, the the higher levels of what's going on at a higher level or a spiritual level or a deeper level. I've been given a lot of information about that and I've put it all into a book, which I which is freely available at the moment on my website. Um, but I, I uploaded it before I finished channeling um, because I thought I had finished channeling and I hadn't. So <clears throat> I need to update it. And I think I probably will put a price on it, something very small, like £3.77 or something. Um, but yeah, I, if it's okay with you, Ben, I'd like to start talking about some of the, the information about Atlantis and how it is connected to now and our timeline, timeline because it is very, very connected. A lot of people are not saying this stuff, and I don't know if that's because they're um, not focusing on it or because they're not aware of it. Um, I'm not talking about the, the you know, Joe blogs down the road or or Auntie Mary. I'm talking about the, the spiritual teachers and the people in the public eye who are talking about this stuff at the moment. They don't seem to be talking about the connection between Atlantis and now, um, except for David Wilcox. I think he did. He has kind of touched on it slightly, but just very, very um, briefly, very briefly. So if it's OK with you, I'd really like to go into that a bit more. Certainly, yes. Okay, great. So what I was shown is that there is a big connection, a big similarity between what happened at the time of Atlantis and what's happening now. So I don't know if I said this, I can't remember if I said this to you in the in the in one of the last interviews we did, but I just need to, I feel like I need to, to go over it again and really explain it a, a bit more in depth. Sure. Um, Thanks, Ben. So during the time of Atlantis, negative energy came in and caused the downfall of Atlantis. That negative energy could be also be described or um, labelled as negative ET energy, negative agenda, black hats, cabal, um, Illuminati. So, but they came in and they overtook um, Atlantis. And they changed the DNA of, of, 
the, the Atlanteans at the time to lower it, to make it onto a lower frequency, because the Atlanteans were a very high frequency. They were much more advanced, much more spiritual. Um, they had great knowledge, great wisdom. They were operating at a higher level, a higher frequency. So their DNA was different. Their DNA was of a higher caliber. Um, so they had, they lived a lot longer. They had great healing abilities, great abilities to connect and, and um, connect with their brothers and sisters and their higher selves and higher beings and star nations, positive ET energies, um, because they were operating at a higher frequency. So they had access to higher dimensions or, or interdimensional or multidimensional um, beings. So the negative agenda came in and overtook them. Now, this would have taken a period of time and um, it didn't happen overnight. So it would have taken a period of time and eventually they, they came in and came in and came in and just took over. So the, the Atlanteans began to, that was the downfall of the, the, the Atlantis. So the negative energies came in and took over. And the Atlanteans began to forget and to be dumbed down and amnesia um, became established then. There was also a veil of amnesia placed around the earth um, energetically. And that is being, everything is connected now to Atlantis on a, on a higher level, on a multidimensional level, on a galactic level, on a to do with astrology as well because stars are aligning up so there's a lot of things going on it's not just the coronavirus there's 5g there's corona there's vaccines there's um earth shifts there's the stars aligning there's lots of stuff going on so it's all tied into what happened at atlantis because there was a large meteor that hit the earth at the time of the downfall of atlantis and which caused ma massive um, earthquakes and, and earth um, um, catastrophic um, events. So our weather is also changing now. Um, sorry, I was just taking a sip of water there. Um, or tea. So the... The time period with Atlantis is that the, the, a meteor came in and hit the Earth and it knocked the Earth off its axis. So the Earth shifted off its axis. And I do believe Atlantis was where Antarctica is now. Um, and the Earth is shifting back now onto its original axis, its original um, position, its original, its original state. And that is also what's happening now. Where, where the, the, so the Earth is shifting back to its original state before it was knocked off its axis. So there will be weather changes. There will be, um, I don't like to use the word catastrophic, but there will be major events with, with Earth and with weather changes. Now, I don't think this is all going to happen in one day. I believe it's going to happen over a time period, and I believe it's already begun. So the predictions about... Um, the year 2000 and um, 2012 and 2009 as well, I believe. Um, it's all been energy waves, changes in energy. So it hasn't been the end of the earth, and I don't believe it will be the end of the earth. I believe there's a very positive outcome um, for us, for humanity. But we're shifting back now onto the earth's original axis. And that will affect the weather, that will affect land, that will affect tsunamis and the oceans, that will affect um, everything really for us. But I feel it's going to happen over a period of time. So not to worry about it, because there is a positive outcome. I feel there's a positive outcome for humanity. And that is why we are here as starseeds. And that is also to do with the... Um, the consciousness and ascension, because our D there's, there's so much involved here. Um, our DNA was changed, and that is changing back now. So the way I was shown, I was shown, um, because I get shown images, 
um, quite a lot by the Pleiadians. They, they work with me visually in images because that's the, the easiest way for them to communicate with me most of the time. The other time I get it um, very similar to like I'm working with spirits. So where I can hear them and, and I get downloads of information. So anyway, the the our DNA, um, if you imagine a coil being stretched um, to the point it can't stretch anymore if, and you let go of it, eventually it will go back to its original blueprint, which is what's happening to us now at the moment. And also recently they've told me that within the last couple of weeks, they've told me that um, we either have or had 13 strands of DNA, not 12. Um, so, so we're either going back to 13 strands of DNA or we have or, or, we're, or we are at a space where we are awakening to 13 strands of DNA. Now, in my first book, they did tell me a lot about um 13 they told me about 13 sacred tribes 13 ancient people 13 um 13 star signs 13 crystal skulls 13 statues on easter island 13 13 13 13 so that's all in my first book what they didn't tell me at the time way back in 2009 was that about the 13 DNA strands. So that's new information for me. Um, but birds and animals are also being affected. And I was shown a dream where, or an image where the the birds and the, the are being affected either by um, um, chemtrails or other things that are being sprayed upon us that are even more detrimental to us than we are aware about, than we are aware of. So that's possible. That's a possibility. That's a scenario that's possible where we're also being sprayed now with things that we weren't previously sprayed with. So, but the birds are being affected, and animals will be affected. There's going to be earth changes with the weather and and um major major events causing a lot of, a lot of havoc and disruption where the animals actually become fearful and through through their fear they actually become aggressive and when i saw this i was seeing images of large cats like lions and tigers and giraffes so i was kind of drawn to africa um and i feel that that's to come quite soon um, so we, we need to be, and I, and I don't feel that they were, they may have been caged animals or animals in a zoo or, or, or um, in a safari or, you know, kept somehow, um, or they could be wild animals. Uh, I'm not too sure, um, but I just saw them having a lot of fear and reacting aggressively because of the fear. So, so. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that. The other thing I, they, they told me was um, the, um, sorry, I just need to catch my breath for a second. No problem, Carol, I'll take your time. Thank you, Ben. So we're going back to our original blueprint um, at the time of Atlantis and everything is shifting, which affects the weather, which affects the animals, which affects the birds, which affects us. Because our, our, we are changing. We are absolutely changing. And some people seem to be waiting to go, going back to the way things were. There is no going back to the way things were. This is, we are in biblical times i mean this is this in this what's happening now on earth is unprecedented it's a huge mass awakening of humanity and there is no going back to normal um and some people are, are have woken up to that some are beginning to wake up and some may never wake up to it um okay so i kind of came off track there a bit but what they also showed me is that the link between between now and Atlantis is that the Earth is 
there's two waves of, of energy hitting the earth at the moment. One is positive and one is negative. And as they stream down and hit the earth, it's actually going to cause the earth to twist energetically, not physically, energetically. It's going to co cause the earth to twist energetically and pull apart. And one will become um, in a higher frequency, a higher dimension, a higher vibration. And one will stay where it is in a negative state or it will drop below that so it's either going to drop down into a, a lower dimension or lower frequency or lower energy or it's going to stay at the level it is which is a negative negative um frequency or energy or um at the moment so and, and one is either gonna, one is going to raise so the earth is going to split and divide into two now i heard this described to me um years ago and i couldn't get my head around it and i kept asking asking show me how is that possible and i was talking to spirit when i said show me and i didn't get any answers but the last couple of weeks i've been shown that very clearly in a way that i could understand through a visual image of exactly that thing happening where there's a positive wave hitting the earth like a beam coming down of positive energy and one of negative and it, it twists the earth and it pulls it apart and one goes into a higher dimension and one stays where it is or drops lower so um you know that's my that uh, i'm thankful that they show me in images okay so with the ascension there is our energy is raising our frequency is raising our awareness is raising our consciousness is raising we are changing we are no longer the the humans we were 10 20 30 40 50 years ago um, our energy is changing, our DNA is changing, our frequency is changing, we are raising our consciousness, the, the consciousness of humanity is raising and shifting into a higher frequency, a higher dimension. And part of 5G is to, I believe part of 5G is to overtake us and turn us into robots to keep us dumbed down so that we don't evolve and raise our awareness. Okay, so there's all, I've also been shown that there's going to be mass UFO sightings. Um, and that, well, see, the, the whole thing with coronavirus, it's all been, just, it was a bioweapon that was planned, um, orchestrated deliberately and planned it wasn't an accident or a, a, an accident spill of of, of, the, of the bioweapon it was designed it was orchestrated it was planned well in advance by the negative agenda so with the with the ufo sightings the positive et um, nations star nations the positive et energies are well aware of what's going on at the earth on the earth at the moment but they're also well aware of the future because they've told me that they come from their future into our past i think i've worded that correctly i hope so but they've come from 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 their future into our past um which means that there must to me means that there must have been an event on earth that they um have come to tell us about so that we can um avoid it navigate through it or be aware of what of what's really going on so with the ufo sightings they're here for two reasons that i know of i'm sure they're here for many more but two reasons that i know of so bearing in mind that they've also told me that we don't come from here we are star seeds we are we are the rainbow warriors that's been predicted and prophesized for 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 thousands of years i believe um, so if anyone wants to look that up, please, please do research it and please do research anything I'm saying that you're not sure of, um, because there's a, there's a vast amount of information out there. And I'm not a researcher. <coughs> I'm just simply a channel. <coughs> Excuse me. OK, so the UFO sightings, there's two reasons for them being here that I've been shown. One is that is their interest in Earth and making sure that we don't kill ourselves off that we um that we <clears throat> act and contain to the natural laws of the universe that govern the universe um not to harm ourselves not to harm the earth 
we are our own worst enemies. So they're keeping an eye on us to make sure that we that we stay on track because what we do on Earth does affect our, what's going on in in the, in the galaxy and and um, star systems and galaxies and it it's not contained to the earth energy spreads and it's contagious it's like smoke it has fluidity it has movement it has energy so what we do on earth does affect what's going on in the universe overall as a whole so the other reason they're that they're here is because they want us to know that they're here that they're they're here to help us um and that there has there has been mass sightings already um and just before I came out with that statement, um, I think it was in an interview or it was on Facebook or it was through social media somewhere I put it, um, there then was a spate of um, UFO sightings that became apparent. So, um, so I, you know, I, not just for that reason alone, but I know the information I have is accurate um, and from a, a divine source, divine source or Pleiadians or whatever you want to call it our higher selves even um okay so um they're telling me to talk a bit about egypt um because they showed me years ago that they created us in their likeness and the um the word god in the bible should be replaced with the word gods and then things would start to make much more sense let me just repeat that the word God in the Bible should be replaced with the word gods, and then things would start to make much more sense. Now, they've, they've downloaded a lot of information to me about Egypt, which is all in my, my um, previous book, The Pleiadian Child. Um, so they, they built Egypt and they created us in their own, they created us in their own likeness and they, they built um, Egypt. Um, they did it through sound and through energy and through frequency. Um, sorry, they did it through 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 various different different methods, various methods, through sound through frequency through energy, and they had they had electricity in Egypt. Um, so they, we were genetically engineered. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to take a uh, breath. This is interesting stuff, Carol. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Ben. I wasn't sure if you could still hear me. I can. Um, I can actually. Okay. okay. It's really. Um. I, I mean, what Lord, what you said. I want to thank the Pleiadians if they can hear me you know, for providing this information. I mean, I do. I do take the kind of channeling you talk about very seriously, and it matches an awful lot of what I have discovered through other areas. Um. For example, I'm. This whole idea about the the fall of man and then our return to grace, and it is in the Bible. It's it, but it's it's obviously encoded into the stories of the Bible, but not just the Bible. Lots of legends talk about this, about how we are not living the way we're supposed to be living, and that the idea of DNA and things like that all fits into it. I mean, I didn't know we had thirteen, 13 strands. I mean, I know. Some people say our, our DNA is not activated. Sandra de Roy's film, which I do recommend, Awakening of 12 Strands, and there's a 13th strand, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, when, when I got that information a couple of weeks ago, that was new to me. Um, so uh, that was very new to me because I've always been told or, you know, or led to believe that there's 12. Um, and I did, I'm not a researcher, but I did go away and Google it, and I saw um, some similar posts. Um, whether there is, you know, other people are also, not many, but a few, like two or three other people are also saying that there is actually 13 or, or, or they mention 13. So, um, so that's interesting. Yeah, the 13. So, I was going to say the 13, you, you, it keeps coming up again and again and again, this, this number 13. Of course, it's, some people say it's unlucky. It's not in all cultures, only in some. But um, the, the, the 13th Zodiac, now I've heard of this before as well. I think it's the one that fits between, is it Scorpio and um, Aquarius? It's a Fiacus. Yes. And it's portrayed, think... interesting, it's portrayed as a, a man carrying a snake. He's actually holding a snake in his hand. It's called the, the Fiacus. And um, apparently some, some people say that's a part of the Zodiac. The sun does pass through it. 
Yeah, I mean, if you have a look at um, Laura Eisenhower, she's a really great astrologist. Um, and she works to, with astrology to a very high degree, a very high caliber. And she really goes in depth into astrology at a very high or deep level. Um, and will give a lot of information about um, um, things that most astrology doesn't go into. Um, and she does talk about the 13th star sign as well. Um, but I've just got my book here because I just wanted to read out a couple of things that they told me about the 13. Okay, so the 13 astrology signs, 13 ancient tribes, 13 crystal skulls, 13 sacred sites, 13 sacred geometrical shapes, 13 um, statues on Easter Island. Now, when they said that to me, they're talking about the 13 basalt um, statues on Easter Island. So there's a group of 13 statues on Easter Island, 13 chakras, 13 aura levels and 13 earth chakras. So if anyone is interested in that, um, they can get a copy of my um, book. Um, OK. So that's that's my book there. I hope everyone can see that. Yeah. Um, I've been reading it as well. I've got a copy here. Um, I haven't read all of it, but I do. I did. Um, I've read some of it. I mean, some of it's quite disturbing, obviously, when it goes into your past. But um, the channeling stuff is, is really interesting. It fits in with so much else. I mean, the I, long before I ever knew you, I was interested in the arc, this, this supposed dig that's happening in Antarctica. Because apparently some ruins have been found under the ice. Oh, amazing! I didn't know um, that. But that's what I do. I do absolutely believe that, and that um, Atlantis is where Antarctica is now. Yeah, it's it's. It, I've looking into this that the fact that Antarctica, of course, is freezing cold at the moment because it sits over the Earth's south pole. But see, Ben, the Earth shifted. The mm. Earth shifted off its. It's like crust crustal displacement. Yes. Yeah. The land mass moved. So so Earth was no sorry, Earth North was no longer north and South was no longer south. So the Earth shifted and the, the lands shifted. Um so I believe Atlantis would have at the time of Atlantis before the downfall it would have been very warm. It would have been had a very um hot climate. Um and there would have been a lot of um um, you know, palm trees and, and things like that, that that thrive in hot climates. So it shifted. So it went from a hot climate to a cold climate. And that was also to do with um, the, the Bible says about Noah's flood and um, and catastrophic times. And I, I feel it's all to do with that that period of time where there was not just Atlantis was lost, but also other different um um land was was buried beneath the sea and you know people were wiped out people were wiped out basically yeah the the remains of large structures can still be found on the seabed and it's incredible people like graham hancock and others have been researching this and i find it astonishing that these were last time they were exposed which is the minimum age they must be was like ten thousand eight thousand years ago um and they're, they're really sophisticated structures. Obviously, this was a high civilization. And the myths of, of these being destroyed, I mean, the, the fall of Atlantis, it can be found in other legends as well across the world. They must be talking about something real. And if it's, if it's, I mean, you mentioned like, a, they're, they're, we're talking about three, there's three separate issues that people might want to be, might be confusing and, and they shouldn't. And one is, of course, the pole shift, that is the magnetic poles changing. And, of course, there's crustal displacement. There's also the transformation of the Earth on a spiritual level, which you talked about, the Earth splitting apart on higher dimensions, which is very interesting. I mean, it, it wouldn't, it's not the same as it. It's not literally ripping apart, yeah. though, is it? Well, let me just talk a bit more about that in depth. So at the time of Atlantis, the poles did shift. The poles did shift. And the, the Earth did move and shake and grumble and... So, I mean, it was catastrophic. It's catastrophic. So that's what's happening now. What we're going through is catastrophic. It is. I mean, th this is unbelievable stuff that is 
um, surfacing and emerging when you look at what's happening to the earth and you also look at what's happening to us as humanity those go those coincide with each other what happens to the earth affects us and what happens to us affects the earth we are not separate from the earth in the same way that we are not separate from each other we are connected we are brothers and sisters we are um, divine, beautiful beings that are have immense, amazing abilities that have no real understanding or comprehension of who we are and where we came from. We, we, I mean, Jesus quoted that. Um, I forget the quote in its entirety now, but he quoted something similar to the likes of that we have, we have um, huge, amazing abilities, and and and. We can do more. We can, we can, and we too can heal, and we can do more than that. We were so limited and conditioned and dumbed down. When actually we need to go inside ourselves. We need to go within through meditation or yoga or tai chi or shamanic journeying, and discover for ourselves who we are and where we came from. We need to take our own power back, and realize that we are. We are not victims. We're absolutely not victims. We have divine power moving and flowing through us, within us, above us, beneath us, around us, surrounding us. And we do not come from here. We we are we are star seeds. We are um, genetically engineered by by ET energy, by alien races, and all of this stuff is real. And you know, for those that don't get what I'm saying, go away and research it, because this has been proven now by science. This is not conspiracy no longer. This is not conspiracy anymore. Our science, um, they're, they're not. I'm not talking about the mainstream science, because they are paid to spiel out BS and nonsense. I'm talking about real science and real research and real investigation into our real DNA, our real um, science and astrology and the planets. Our real DNA is now proved by science that we were genetically modified. It's not, it's humanly impossible for our DNA to have just evolved. Um, I can't remember the name of the of the person of the scientist that said that, but it is in Mary Rodwell's book called *The New Human*, um, and I've looked for it several times, um, but I, I can't find it. So I must keep trying to find that, or maybe I'll Google it. Jeremy but, Narby, is it uh, Jeremy Narby? It could be, Ben. It uh, could or, be. Or Greg, Bra Greg Braden is another one. Well, Greg Braden has studied DNA, and I mean, he still you still see a lot of him around on YouTube. Jeremy Narby's dead now, but. Greg Braden was talking about how if you put DNA into like a liquid solution, you you remove it, but the solution it's almost like there's an imprint of the DNA in the solution, and it will form the shape. Completely different molecules will form the shape that was previously there, as if the DNA has a kind of energy. Yeah, it's incredible. It's an incredible thing. But these experiments have been done, and it's been proved. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's incredible stuff, and this is science. It comes down to science and chemicals and molecules and DNA. All of this woo-woo stuff, as some people call it, as being mystical and out there and crazy and conspiracy stuff. To me, and forgive me for saying this because I don't want to be rude to people, but to me they have a very low IQ. Because to believe that it's, it's, it's not science is, goes against the very laws of of. of the universal laws and, and even science and humanity you know we we are there is so much you know we're so there's so much going on and we're so led to off the beat off off the off what's really going on because we're taught one thing and it's complete nonsense and complete bs and then the when we discover i've discovered um that actually the very opposite is true the very opposite is true um so, you know, if anyone just finding out about this stuff now, I do feel very sorry for them. I really do, because I've had since I've had since 2009, actually since I was a child, to process this stuff and get my head around it and, you know, be a conduit or, 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 or um, um, a conduit for energy 
for 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 higher energy so i've had a lot of time to process and um integrate things into myself so that i can understand them so that i can talk about them and, and speak about them and share them and so i feel very sorry for people now who are having to wake up in this short time frame because it is a short time frame we need to take action um we need to wake up we need to meditate we need to raise our vibration raise our energy raise our awareness through meditation through yoga through tai chi through diet through dance through sound there is so much information now coming out about chemtrails about our food about medicines about health about our dna about our bodies about our energy about our consciousness about our awareness that you know 10 years ago we would have been called um cracks or crazy or conspiracy theorists for believing in chemtrails and for years they they adamantly denied there is no such thing as chemtrails and now they have i've heard that they've actually admitted it so there is the evidence there is the science there is the the you know the backbone to what we've been saying for for years and years and years and sometimes we've been talking about stuff and things for thousands of years like the ancient tribes in and Native America that we didn't come from here. We came from the stars and we came to Earth. You know, we've we've been as mystics and psychics and seers and shaman, we've been talking about that for years and we've been laughed at and ridiculed and um, you know, people like David Icke, um who who publicly have been ridiculed on a mass scale, you know, people are starting to wake up to him now and thank god and that is to do with the shift in energy the shift in consciousness because we are waking up we are stepping back into our true essence our divine beings you know we are part of god and we are all brothers and sisters and and we are all connected what i'm being told to talk about then now is the the thanks that this is a war on humanity and a war on consciousness and it's to do with the ascension but through every system on earth through schools through media through banks through um the pharma big pharma the pharmaceutical companies through um the governments through schools through banks through the media all the systems in place have taken us down the wrong path and and given us a certain narrative um excuse me that is far from the truth far from the truth um and the school system is, is very much part of that and they've tried to divide and conquer and that is a, that is a saying that i keep getting over and over and over again in the last couple of weeks the last month or so is divided and conquer and united we stand so they they've put us against each other they've put man against woman they've put black against white they've put um every group they've male against female they've put every group against each other to keep us at war and religion is included within that so we need to realize we need to realize and wake up and put down our weapons though and that we are all connected because when we realize that you would no longer have any it would dissolve your hatred because when you can look at someone in the eye and and this has happened to me and that's how i know it's real when you look at someone <clears throat> in the eye and you can see yourself in that person being mirrored back at you that changes everything that changes your whole perspective your whole dynamic on this is me and that's you over there because that is not 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 the truth that is not real that is an illusion that we are separate from each other and that we are are divided and because that is what that, that is what they're what the energies that they're working with divide and conquer so we need to stand in in our united um consciousness and united power and come together and create and especially with spiritual people they've divide within the group of spiritual people and if it's okay ben i'd like to go into this a bit more in detail within the group yes, of 
Thank you, darling. Within the group of spiritual people, there are several groups or, or subgroups. There is the UFO community. There is the um, shamanic practitioners. There is the shaman. There is the Reiki. There is the spiritualist church. There is the, um, I forget what they're called now, but there's a religion that, uh, I think it's the Unitarian, but they actually believe in UFOs. Or it's not, it's obviously not atheist, but it's... The Aetherius Society. Aetherius, yeah, yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, where they do believe in, in, um, in that we came from, from the stars, um, star nations, ET energy. So even within the spiritual group, there is several divides of um, the UFO community, the spiritual community, the spiritualist church, the... Um, you know, all of and the shamanic, there's there's a whole divide between us within the spiritual. Um, so we need to connect, especially within the spiritual groups. We need to realize that we've been divided on purpose within the spiritual and 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 also the conspiracy theorists or the alien, the ancient alien enthusiasts, we've been divided. When actually what we're saying and what we're being and what we're describing is all the same thing, more or less, you know, the, and, and part of that is that we need to, we need to realize that we're not alone, that, that and the way we, we are connected, we're connected to each other, we're connected to God, we're connected to the sun, we're connected to the universe, we're connected to the moon question mark we're connected to the pleiadians we're connected to sirius we're connected to jesus we're connected to lemuria we're collect collect connected to atlantis we're connected to to mount shasta there is no um time is an illusion and there is no real divide between between us and the pleiadians or jesus or anything we can go forward back up down in time space universe so there is nothing that we cannot connect to nothing that we cannot connect to and and i learned at a very early age that i that that, that there was something within me that was very different to my home to my family to my school to my to my to, to the teachers, to the school system, to the kids at school, I was very different. I was very much an oddball. I did not fit in. I stood out like a sore thumb. I was made, um, I was mocked at. I was made ridiculed. I was, you know, everything that, that could be aimed at me was aimed at me. Same here. Abuse, poverty. But this is a common theme, Ben. ben. You know, that's what happens because when we were born there is i don't think it's when we are born i think it's before that but our soul is eternal our soul is eternal and we've had life on other planets other star systems other nations you know it's a multi-universal universe multi-dimensional universe so it's not we don't have just life on earth you know, there's life in many other places within the universe. And to think otherwise is quite, um, it is very ignorant, really. It's it's a lower IQ or astro turf mentality where you're just, you're too scared to look beyond of what's outside of the narrative of that we're being taught. So, and I'm not, I, I'm, I am different. I am different. And the reason I'm different is because I'm a starseed. So I don't fit into normal society. And I know a lot of people will get this because a lot of people watching will be starseeds like yourself, Ben, who are starseeds. And we don't fit in. We don't follow the narrative. We stand out like a sore thumb. And the reason that we have such horrendous childhoods and sometimes life situations as well is because we come from the outside in because we are star seeds and they the positive and the negative because this is a war of the worlds so the positive and the negative have somehow tracked our dna or our energy individually so they know who i am they know who you are they know who 
Tom, Dick, Harry and Jones are. They know who, who Laura is. They know who Sasha is. They know who David is. They know who um, the, the, the spiritual leaders are, the spiritual ones, the, the starseeds who are here to raise humanity's consciousness. And the positive want that to happen. So they've tracked us individually to to help to in a positive way to help to monitor us and also connect with us at certain times in our lifetime it's like opening a door or turning a light switch on the negative has also tracked us on an energetic level so they know who ben is they know who carol is they know who david is they know who sasha is they know who laura is um so that they can put events and and experiences into place to take away our power, to keep us dumbed down even more. And this comes down to us on an individual level as starseeds, Ben. So I'm talking about you and I'm talking about me and I'm talking about Sasha and David and Laura and all the people, all the spiritual teachers. Because it doesn't matter if you can reach one person or reach a thousand. Having said that, well, to some degree it doesn't matter, but having said that, they have tracked us on a negative on a, on a the negative agenda has tracked us on, on an energetic level so they put negative people negative places negative spaces negative family into our experience to individually to keep us down and collectively to keep us dumbed down so that when we are abused as children when we are raped as children or adults when we are in abusive relationships or in abusive families or in poverty or rape or abuse or, or bullying it it affects us it takes away our it strips us bare it takes away our power if we let it if we let it it takes away our power it's it actually um i would use the word destroys our dna it destroys our dna it affects our dna it puts us into a lower frequency a lower vibration a lower energy a lower consciousness a lower awareness because where it, it's trauma when you put trauma into someone it knocks them back 10 spaces or 20 spaces or 30 spaces depending on the level of trauma so those people who have been hugely traumatized, it knocks them back even further. And the reason they've done that is because you've got different stages of an advancement and different stages of awareness. So those ones who are hugely traumatized on a, on a, to a, a, an extreme level are the ones that are the leaders of the leaders of the leaders of the star seeds does that make sense yeah it's almost like a kind of initiation i mean it's it, if i look back on it now and it seems to make sense at the time it was horrible but like yourself i had a, i was a miserable child i was badly treated by other people i didn't know why i mean but both by other children and by adults and i didn't know why there's no motive for it i was completely unprovoked but it's it has affected me <clears throat> probably it's had a on the long run, it's horrible to say, but it's probably built my character quite well. It really has. I mean, and, and, it, and, and the drama, I, I can't stand like yourself. I can't stand this sort of like infighting. It's, it's going too far. It's getting ridiculous now. And I mean, we, we, we are in a spiritual battle. People want to take action. People say, well, what can we do to take action? There's an awful lot you can do. I'm just simply the vaccine, the, the, the coronavirus vaccine, which they're testing at the moment here in Oxford, where okay. I live. Oh don't God. have it don't have it refuse yeah. it's forced medication they can't make you have it we're yeah. socially distancing we're not you know we're not you know we're not spreading it around we don't need it and it's bad for us and it's probably full of all kinds of things and yeah. that's a big subject but so don't have that um but, you know i think the chemtrails and things like that, you know it's all a last ditch attempt this is the cornered rat fighting for its life the illuminati are in trouble there's a there was a wonderful video released by the QAnon movement recently called we are united and it, I just thought when you, what you were saying just now, it all came back into my head. It's really, really, and it's like, it's a wonderful video. It talks about this very thing, about how secrets are no longer being kept secret. About it's, it's not even really particularly taboo now to be a conspiracy theorist. It's becoming cool, thanks to people like David Icke. Um, so I think maybe our time has come, Carol. 
Yeah, it is. It's because the whole thing with the cabal or the Illuminati or the negative agenda or the negative ET energies, the, the, the powers that be that are controlling us, like the governments and everything, they, they've put out this coronavirus and it's like a wave of energy. And what's happened is if you imagine a wave of energy and it's double backed on, on itself, it's like a tsunami where it hits and then it doubles back on itself. That's what's happening with consciousness at the moment. We are where it's it's they've put this into the 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 into humanity and, and the consciousness as the coronavirus. And now it's doubling back on itself. So we are waking up like a wave of energy is waking up. And it's. I, th I think this is a, a, a great window of time and a window for, window frame of time and opportunity for us to wake up. Um, and and that it seems to me to be um, apparent that you know, that that's what's happening. We are waking up. There's still a resistance and there's still a reluctance, but I think we are in a revolution of um, mass awakening. You know. Um, but there does, sorry, there does still seem to be some resistance to people waking up, and a resistance to to conspiracy theories because they're not conspiracy theories. Um, like I was saying, the chemtrails. You know, they said for years that that's that's BS. That's not true. And now. And now, Ben, they've come out. I don't know when they said it or what they said, but I do know they have come out and admitted publicly that chemtrails are real. I saw that press conference where they were talking about how they had been, there had been solar radiation management going on, things like that, for, since, since the 1980s. They said that. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what? I mean, I think the, the resistance is getting more. What I've noticed is about the resistance it is getting more and more belligerent as it shrinks in size. And yes. it weakens. It's almost it's, it's going through a kind of almost a distillation process. I mean, they're then it's almost like the gloves are off now. I mean, they're they're calling David Icke quite. They're being much more blatant about what they say about David Icke. You know how he hates Jews, and how he's how horrible he is, and things like this. But because he's not I'm, racist. Of course he's not. not. Racist. No. He but, knows. No. He knows on a fundamental level that we are all one. We are all connected. We are all brothers and sisters. And I've I've watched him on interviews where he is he, he explains this he explains that he knows on, on on he knows in his soul and his heart that we are all connected, and when you know that when you understand that, it's it, it, it racism falls away. You can no longer have have the mentality of oh I'm white and I'm female and I'm this and I'm that and I'm over here and I'm separate from everyone else. No 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 no. We, we understand that we are all connected and the skin color and the, the hair tone and the language has no meaning. I mean, did you know, Ben, that they also created, um, separated us from language? So languages became different. Originally, we spoke one language um, and the stories of that in the Bible. But we spoke one language. We spoke the same language. The Tower and of Babel, that, yeah. And language actually came about through sound. It started with sounds and symbols, and then we gradually um, it became language. But it started with sound and symbols, which is why you still have uh, sounds like om and, and things like that and symbols. Um, but also countries <coughs> were created to divide us. And that's what they've done, you know, conquer and divide and put this people over here, that people over there, over there, over there, over there and separate separate and divide and the ancient people the sacred tribes have all been the spiritual people have all been massacred massacred on a huge um in a, in a huge way like the native americans the africans the maori the aborigines you know the list is, the list is endless um, they always go for the spiritual leaders and i mean this has happened of course, this happens. Illuminati occupied states, which went in, into imperial mode, such as the British Empire, the Spanish conquista and things like that in Americas. They did that. Yes, you're right. They targeted the spiritual people for destruction. And what's more, they've done it at home as well in Illuminati uh, occupied areas of the world, which now covers the whole world. But it used to be sort of Europe only. What were they doing? They were burning witches. They were burning but, the cunning folk all through that's... the Middle Ages. That's why, Ben, because yeah. the, 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 witches... the Roman Empire targeted the Druids. 
Why the Druids? Yeah, well, let me tell you. The, the witches and the Druids and the pagans and the, the healers and the, the shaman, you know, all were, all were spiritual people. So they have greater understanding. They have greater awareness. They have greater knowledge. They have greater consciousness, awareness, knowledge, information, ability to channel. And that's why they've gone out after them because their DNA... There are some people on this earth, no matter what you do to them, you cannot lower their consciousness. You can spray them with chemtrails. You can feed them food that makes them ill. You can um, zap them with 5G technology. You can zap them with radiation. You can zap them with everything. And their consciousness will still remain at a high level. Um and I'm, 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 I'm talking about you and me as well, Ben. So whatever you do to us, we cannot. It's like trying to eradicate air or 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 water or, or, or you know, you just can't. You just can't. Um, so that's why they've gone after those people, because of their energy, because of who they are, because they were the starseeds. They are the starseeds. Past, present and future is all one. So can I share something with you? Can, can I yeah. share something with you? Yeah. I mean, this what you just talked about has just reminded me of something incredible. I saw an interview with a guy. He was a Tibetan Buddhist, and he was a monk, and he spent twelve years in a Chinese prison, and um, he was badly treated. He was deprived of food and water. He was tortured. He was made, forced to stay awake at night and things like that. And he was really, really badly treated. And he said, "What was your biggest fear in the prison?" Um, and he says. I didn't fear death. I didn't fear anything except I was worried that I might end up hating my captors. <laughs> and I thought to myself, how could, how could it take someone of superhuman ability not yeah. to feel hatred when you're put in that situation? And I was, I was, my jaw dropped. I was almost, I was almost moved to tears. It was an incredible thing to say. And this was an incredible man. And it just, it reminds me so much of what you just said. There are some people who are spiritually indestructible. Yeah. Even if you kill you kill them, you can do whatever you like to them. Their their, their spirit is unblemished and, re, un, and can't be blemished. Yeah. And I don't That's know if I'm one of those, but I I am a star seed like you. I mean, I've always like I've shared a lot of your experiences of the past. The feeling that you 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 can't understand you some human behaviour. It just doesn't. And the just feeling you just don't belong. Because we don't belong, then mm. we're not from <clears> here. <throat> we're not from here. Mm. Absolutely not. And anyone who's watching this, who's feeling that, you know, please research into stuff. Please get a copy of my book. Um, I'll do a small, I hate advertising, but that's it. There's yeah, I've the got too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben. But, um, you know, because I was, I was, I was there. I was, was, took me many, many years to, to, to integrate this stuff and process it within myself so that I'm now okay with talking and speaking about it and who I am and where I came from and why I'm here. But years ago, I was in the back of the class, in the back of the, the hall, in the back of the, the my room, in the back of the house at the back, sat down, shut up, not saying anything, still having the experiences, but not sharing them, not sharing them to myself, not admitting them to myself not admitting them to my family, not sharing them with my family, not admitting them to my friends, not sharing them with my friends. But so it's a process that we that that you go through. So anyone watching this now, please understand and realize that you are not alone in your experiences of of the experiences that you're having of of you know of the dream time or the the when you're dreaming or or the dream state and your experiences of the psychic of ets of star nations of merlin of jesus of mother mary of whatever experience you're having is real it's just that you're told and taught and conditioned and led to believe that it's nonsense when the very opposite is true so please i i kind of urge you to to go inside go internally go within yourself and meditate and find out your own answers you know don't believe someone don't believe me that what i'm saying is 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 true and right and accurate because for me it is but it might not be your truth. Go and find your own answers, your own research. I, I would even say, 
don't research stuff at the moment because there's a lot of fake news out there, but go internally and do your own um, shamanic journey and do your own meditations, do your own Tai Chi, your own, um, get in touch with your creativity and your own essence, your own divinity, your own God source, your own God connection. And you'll find out that you are much more magnificent and beautiful and divine than you are taught to believe or led to believe. Mm. It, it's, 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 it makes me so, it makes me quite sad to, to be able to observe all this stuff that's going on in the world and where we're at consciously, where humanity is at consciously. And it makes me quite sad that, that some people are so far from their true essence and their true source and their divinity that they still don't believe in the psychic stuff, which is basic, basic knowledge and wisdom and foundation because it's no, it's not mystical. It's not mystical. It comes down to chemicals. The psychic ability is released through is, is when, when DMT is a, a chemical in the brain and when that's released in excess, and sometimes it can be released in excess through trauma, through abuse, through rape. Um, that releases an excess of, of DMT in the brain that causes psychic vision, that causes awareness, that causes experiences. So it comes down to chemicals. It's not psychic. It's not, well, it is psychic, but it's not mystical. It's not something that's, that's way out there in nonsense and conspiracy. It comes down to chemicals and science and um, DMT and DNA, you know, which is when you look at the real science, the real quantum physics, and um, I forget his name now, but he's been, he's a scientist that's, that's been um, talking a lot recently. Um, no, I forget his name, sorry. But he's, you know, he's talking about quantum physics. So maybe Google quantum physics and new there science. Several, or there are several great new scientists who are actually got an open-minded idea to these things now. And there's a great film called What the Bleep Do We Know? And yeah. it's, I love that. I mean, what uh, you just said really reminds me of the, the – this. I think the climactic scene is where the main character is – she stares at herself in a mirror and she starts – feeling this terrible self-loathing, but then she has this awareness and it suddenly comes to her and she learns to, to love herself and, and she finds a new lease of life. It's a wonderful film. Mm. It's a wonderful film. I've seen that. I, I, I saw that, that um, I think it was yeah, well, years ago, 2004 or no, well, sometime around then. Um, yeah, it was an amazing film. But you know what's key, Ben, is when you've been abused or raped as a child or, you know, come from a negative or, or dysfunctional childhood, you know, what's, what's key is forgiveness. It's absolutely key, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a lot, it can be a long, lonely, hard, dark journey in walking back to healing and walking back to forgiveness and letting go of the memory. And... For myself, I was all, always determined that I would, I, I used to say to myself, I will be damned if I let you. I will be damned if I let you. And I never finished the sentence even to myself. But what I meant, my intention behind that sentence was, I will be damned if I let you ruin the rest of my life just because of the memory of that. Because it's no longer in my experience it's a past experience that's done and gone and there's no going back to that there's no changing it there's no it's nothing it, there's nothing that i can do or change or effect so that's over there that happened but now i'm over here and i need to let go of the memory so i used to say to myself i will be damned if i let you root that memory ruin the rest of my life so what I need to do is I need to walk away from it. I need to let it go. I need to forgive it. But forgiveness is the key, absolutely the key. In And it took me a long process. It's not something that can be done in your heart in a short space of time. It takes a long process in healing, in forgiveness of 
the of of the other person. And for years, I I I was working through the process of forgiving, forgiving, forgiving. And then I'd done that to 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 a level where I couldn't do it anymore. There wasn't anything left to forgive. And then I was still stuck because I didn't feel like I'd forgiven them or the other person. And so I didn't know what to do. I was just stuck in this void of trauma. And I could feel it vibrating in my aura. I could feel it vibrating, this energy of <gasps> trauma. And, <gasps> you know, that's how it felt to me. And then I realized that I needed to stop forgiving other people and forgive myself. I needed it's, to forgive um... myself. And I think... You know, sometimes I feel that's where we're at. We need to forgive ourselves. You know, we, we need to forgive ourselves. And that's it's part a, of the healing process. Definitely. You know, that's a, that's a difficult journey. It's one that I'm sort of on at the moment. And it's you're right, it's, it's one of the biggest challenges that I face and anyone can face. Um, yeah. You know, Carol, we've been talking... But Okay, but can I just say, Ben, yeah, of that's a really good sign because it took me, let me see, how long did it take me? Um, it took me many years to forgive other people for what for the horrendous things they did to me. Um, oh, and th then I got to the point that I needed to forgive myself and that took many years. And I'm, I'm in all honesty, I'm probably still doing that to a certain extent. <laughs> but that's a very so the first thing is to forgive the other pe person or people um and often they are family members trusted family members but that takes a period of time you cannot do it in a day or a week or a month or a year or three years it takes time it's the layers of the onion and then you get to a point where okay you've done that work now i need to forgive myself and it's a process the same process kind of mirrored where you you've done that healing not healing but you've done the healing work for yourself in forgiving others now the process is you in you forgiving yourself for everything and maybe also turning it into those negative experiences actually have a positive outcome for you because because they put you on the spiritual path. They made you who you are today. They made you the warrior. They made you the light worker. They made you aware that you are a starseed. You are a warrior. They made you aware that you are spiritual, that you are connected to, to, to each other, that you are part of God, that you are divine and beautiful and infinite and consciousness awake, aware and conscious. And you are here to, and you will get to a point, Ben, where you um, speak out more and more and more and more because we are star seeds and we are here. We are here, uh, no doubt in my mind at all, that we are here to help to raise the awareness of humanity and the consciousness of humanity and without those experiences ben we wouldn't be without those negative experiences mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able we wouldn't be able to be where we are now as individuals and collectively in order to 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 be on our journey our spiritual journey and our spiritual path in helping to to raise the energy raise the energy raise the energy um so yeah so that's it, it's it's all part of a grand plan or a master plan of um of 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 where we came from and who we are and it's very much connected to to the star beings and where we really came from it, it's part of the the the, it's part of the evolvement and, and the evolution and the history of humanity. You can't have light without dark. You can't have good without bad. You can't have um, one thing exist without the opposite existing as well. But at the highest level, we are all God. We are all connected. So at the highest level, there is no light and dark. There is no war of the world. But that's, we're, not, we're not at that level. We're here. We're on Earth. 
So this is the level we're operating on. But some of us can connect to a divine source and um, light beings. So yeah, I was... it's a great time. It's a great time to be alive. I think to be a part of this drama and, and or this real <laughs> life. There's no better time to be alive. And you know, Carol, we've been talking for a long time now. This we've been <laughs> gone through an awful lot of things, and it's been it's been a really wonderful discussion. And um, it's been great to hear the latest from the Pleiadians. So thank you very much for that. I really appreciate that. And, yeah, uh, thank you, Ben, so much for, for having me on the show and letting me talk and letting them talk and hearing what they have to say. Yeah. It was wonderful you were channeling live while we were on the air. That was great. Well, we yeah. Were, it's really great. Yeah. So um, my name is Ben Emlyn Jones. You check me up, Hospital Portals Against the New World Order. I've been talking to Carol Noonan today. So uh, wherever you're watching this on Carol's YouTube channel or listening to it somewhere, um, thank you very much for listening and for watching. And you take care, Carol. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Ben. Thank you.